The uh, Sacred Mountains, as we have shared before, is that uh, we start with the direction east, and that one there is Mount Blanca. In the language of our people, we call it Sisnachin. And then we have to the south, we have uh, Mount Taylor over by Grants, New Mexico. So it's just, that's what they call that. And sometimes they translate it to say Tongue Mountain. And then we have the mountain to the west, which is the uh, San Francisco Peak over uh, north of present-day Flagstaff, Arizona. And uh, Dioco Osi is what we call that. And then, of course, now the last mountain is the uh, Mount Hesperus, just uh, north of the uh, present-day location of uh, Mesa Verde. <laughs> This is the uh, sacred mountain to the east, and it's the uh, Mount Blanca is what they call it in English, but in the uh, language of our people, it's called Sisnachin. This is the first mountain that the Dene encountered when they came into this part of the continent, and it's uh, seen from the east here, and it's the one that uh, looked like it has a black belt, but the belt is actually the vegetation along the ridges and that that go up to the as far as the timber line and so it looks like it has a belt that's made out of uh, the dark parts of the uh, surface at the base of the mountain so it's called the uh, cis not gin cis is belt not gin is that it comes down off of the uh, the mountain so this is called uh, cis not gin it's the first sacred mountain to the east and this area as we are told by the old people is that the grass grew very tall here about almost waist high and there was buffalo and pronghorn, antelope and that in great numbers. And this is the area that the uh, Dene looked out over here to the north and they saw these mountains with the uh, piles of snow on top. And so they referred to it as Topatataskit. That means there were hills of water. And uh, so they understood that when the snow melted that the, uh, it produced water. And so they called it Topatataskit. And so this area here is uh, the place that the Dene came into the area first. So there are a lot of stories in that and songs and prayers in that that mention this area as uh, they are mentioned in the ceremonial uh, settings and so on. And the uh, abundance of uh, wildlife out in this area. And then the other thing about the uh, land area to the north of us here and to the south there are places where there are large areas of white sand. Sebet Hataskai is uh, the way that they refer to it. And so those are areas that are designated on present day maps and so on. And uh, designated as uh, special lands and that set aside and that for uh, park service type lands. And today we can still see some of these mountains and how the Dene came into this area. It must have been about the fall of the year when they came in, into this area, because they referred to the, uh, the grass areas as it was yellow, Nehotso. And uh, some even call it Sekahotkeil, which means the white, gray, uh, white areas that are on the land surface, And then uh, it's also very important to understand that the Rio Grande has the headwaters to these mountains here to the north of uh, this sacred mountain here. And the water for the Rio Grande flowing in this direction, which is to the east. And then also it flows, uh, the snows melt and they flow to the uh, west into the Gunnison Valley. And the waters from this area, the snow melt flows down into the Gunnison Valley. And then from th there it flows into the Colorado River. And so the stories are told about uh, this area when they, the Dene first came into this part of the continent some 2,000 years ago. The uh, sacred mountain to the south is uh, referred to as Mount Taylor in English. In the language of our people, it's called Sotzif. Some people translate that to mean the Tongue Mountain, but uh, it's the texture I think it's referring to traditionally when they say uh, like the smoothness of a buckskin, the sho, sho is what they would call it in that way, is that it is velvety looking, smooth looking, and so they would call it so And uh, it's the sacred mountain to the uh, south, 
and it's near Grants, uh, New Mexico, and it is also the uh, area that uh, the giant was uh, killed, the one that was the most evil, the most vile giant in the uh, winter stories and that. And so this was the place that uh, that giant was, uh, was killed by the two boys. And so as the blood flowed out of the giant, it flowed down into the uh, lower parts of the area here. And there's red, reddish lava rock and that in all different places. And that was said to be the, the bubbling blood of the giant as it flowed uh, away from his body. And there's also a lake area that used to be up here in this area. And that was the drinking water that that giant used to drink out of. The other stories in that associated with this area is the original Fort Wingate, when it was built by the military back in uh, the mid-1800s, was down in this area. Uh, in fact, just uh, practically south uh, west of uh, present-day Grants, New Mexico. And so the teachings of our people, there are a lot of the stories in that that are the winter stories type of stories in that that are set in this area. And so the uh, mountain, of course, is very uh, sacred. And a lot of people would collect uh, mountain soil from this particular mountain because it's really quite easily accessible. It's, uh, it's just uh, east of the uh, Continental Divide. And the water from this mountain flows to the, uh, into the Rio Grande. And the uh, area up here where the Continental Divide is uh, located uh, east from here, they call that area Tosazne, which is where the water flows in two directions. One flowing to the east and one flowing to the west. And so there's a lot of uh, history in that and teachings in that that are associated with this particular area and surrounding this particular sacred mountain. So it's the, the Navajo Nation actually uh, includes this particular area where the place is called Theru. And it goes up to Ayanaba, uh, which is uh, to the uh, west of us here. It's Buffalo Springs. And then, of course, the uh, area of Crown Point East South is what they call uh, the Crown Point area. And then to the south is uh, near the uh, Zuni Pueblos, which is probably, uh, as where the crow flies, it might be 60 miles away. But Dostej. Uh, is what they call the Zuni people, and they live down in that area. And of course, we have on the other side of this mountain, at the base of this mountain to the south, there are some other uh, Pueblo people in, in that as well. And so, like I say, there's a lot of uh, stories in that associated with this particular area. You can have that uh, told in the winter stories during the winter time. We're uh, here near the uh, sacred mountain to the uh, west, uh, referred to sometimes as San Francisco Peak, sometimes Mount Humphreys. But to our people, it's called the Dio uh, Corsi, is uh, the way we refer to this mountain. The uh, translation of the word Dio Corsi, many times people say, we don't know what it means. But uh, as some of the old people used to say, Dioko means underneath there is fire. Dioko. And then they say, Dioko si, which means the top of it remains white and glitters and white during the uh, seasons of the year that is late into the summertime. And so the uh, mountain itself, this was a place where herbs were collected and uh, Ceremonies were sometimes performed here as well. And of all of the mountains, this is probably the one that with the uh, most sacred soil was collected from this uh, San Francisco peak or this mountain of the uh, sacred mountain to the uh, west. And so the teachings are that people, uh, the Neh lived all around this area for many years. And there's still, you know, some of the people that have uh, become the Neh more recently, which were the many goat people and the black sheep people, which we call the Than the Neh, or the Petajan the Neh, occupied much of this area through here and around to the, uh, toward the edge of the Grand Canyon and out toward the uh, flatland areas. Uh, Wapaki is sometimes uh, referred to this area, that there are some ruins. 
a lot of times people think that they, those are Anasazi ruins, but uh, some of the old people say no, that is people that became Dene. And there are many people from this area there that became Dene as well. So the edge of the uh, rim, before you drop down into the lower land, is uh, the Mugion Rim just south of the San Francisco Peak. And that area, all of it, was uh, occupied by Dene. And they say that the Tango people, uh, or sometimes referred to as uh, the salt people, the salt clan. And uh, of course, coming this way in more recent times, the black sheep people and the many goat people, all of them uh, occupied these areas, these clan families. And so this mountain here to the, uh, the sacred mountain to the west, the Hidokorosi, it has a name and it has a lot of history with the people that occupied this area. And so much of the herbs in that that were collected annually and that came from this mountain. And uh, the teachings are that there are certain songs in that that apply to, to this mountain by itself, like all the other sacred mountains as well. But more so to this one here. I don't, I'm not sure as to why this was the most uh, sacred of all of the mountains that the Dene recognized. And uh, there's stories in that that uh, in recent times, there was a large forest fire and that, that burned much of the uh, this particular side of the, uh, the mountain, which is the east side of the mountain. And they say that that is a warning to all of the people of the region that uh, if things don't improve, that there's going to be fire and burning and that there's going to be experience with, uh, plus the shortage of so many things that we depend on for our daily lives. And so there are still a lot of teachings on that associated with what we are told about the Diokosi uh, and uh, the teachings of our old people and those are the things that we are told. We're right here south of uh, the sacred mountain to the north. Mount Hesperus is the, uh, the name that is given to it on the map but uh, in the language of our people it's called the Bensa. The Bensa is actually a reference to the, uh, the bighorn sheep and the traditional stories in that is that it is said that there were hundreds of uh, bighorn sheep that would uh, graze down here in these flat areas. This area that we're located in at the moment right here is, uh, has a name and that means uh, the place where it is much structures of hills and mesas and they call it Dahotesja in the language of our people because of so many different uh, obstacles. And our people used to occupy this area straight south of um, Mount Hesperus, down towards what is now Mancus, Colorado, and all the way down to the San Juan River. And uh, so this was the area that our people would live in during the summertime. And during the wintertime, they would then come down, down off of the mesa and uh, farm the areas down along the San Juan River and the uh, other flowing rivers and that out of these mountains. And so it is that our people occupied. This area here was one of the very major locations of the original settlements that the Dene uh, lived in for many generations. And that's what we are told. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching our videos. If you like what you see, don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss one of our uploads. Also, head over to our website, NavajoTraditionalTeachings.com. Sign up for our email list. Okay.